trick is to pull it back in but keep looking straight forward so that is apparently how you get the perfect line so let's try it start off by drawing a line outwards then you look forwards and draw it in and fill it in i redone it in blue so it matched my top and i love it so much it works so well careful when you do this but you want to get all of your lashes i'm scared of this but let's try it anyway she curls them upside down and moves down her lashes i don't know how well you can see that but my lashes are actually going downwards then she curled them right at the root i've just put some mascara on i curled this side normally and this side that technique i think this side looks slightly more curled this is part four of the story of the silent twins by the names of June and Jennifer Gibbons. Once they sent June to be back with Jennifer, the staff at the school decided to release them from school at only 16 years old. The girls, now having all the free time in the world, started making fantasy lives for their dolls. Every single thing they had their dolls do, both of them had to agree on. Their mom finally decided that it would probably be healthy to give the girls diaries. The girls wrote in the diaries about how they wished they were individuals, but they did not know how to, nor had the strength to. Finally, when they were 17 years old, they decided that they needed to experience life. The best way to do this, they thought, was to get boyfriends. But every time they would encounter boys, they couldn't get up the courage to break their silence. They finally got up the courage to go after the Armstrong boys, who one of them they thought was already in love with them. The boys would drink with the girls, they would smoke with the girls, they would do teenage things. Stay tuned for part five. Story time, how I found out my substitute teacher was actually my biological father. So of course I went to school for our usual class and our teacher wasn't there. So we had a substitute that day and I could have sworn that I recognized him but I couldn't tell from where. There would be times during the lecture where I would look up and he would just be looking at me. I felt like there was a weird connection between the two of us but I didn't exactly know where to place it. Since it was the last hour of the day, he asked me to stay after class. I immediately got the creeps and said no, I had to catch my bus. And I hadn't seen him for weeks after that. Some days later, I noticed a for sale sign on my neighbor's yard. So during their open house, I decided to peek out my window and see who was visiting. And there he was, my substitute teacher. I got the creeps and I just ran upstairs to focus on something else. Once the house sold and the moving trucks came in, I saw that it was my substitute teacher that actually bought it. I was terrified but still felt this weird connection. That's when my mom offered for us to bring cookies over to his house. She said it was the neighborly thing to do, so that's what we did. So we went to go knock on his door. Stay tuned for part two and add me on Instagram. This is the reason why I treat people the way that I do. And this is how a toxic friend changed my life. Let's set the scene. Fifth grade I had a best friend, not gonna name her. We were like this. We were partners for everything. Always sat next to each other. If the teacher said, team up, she'd be like, I wanna be a Joe's dad. So we would team up. But if we were ever on a team and we were losing, she would blame me. If I got a question wrong, she would call me dumb. If I shared my snacks with her, she wouldn't share any of hers back with me. You guys know those Cosmo brownies with the sprinkles? I would literally force my mom to buy those just for her. And when I'd ask for a chip, she'd be like, never willing to share. We would get into fights a lot. And in turn, I started being mean. But up until that point, I was a pretty wild child. Pretty crazy. Hyper. This girl would make me feel stupid for getting questions wrong, for not being fast enough in PE, but then the next day would want to be my best friend. I felt like a failure a lot. If I won anything, I'd have to give it to her. And I was mean too. I didn't like the person I was around her. Until eventually in art class, I legitimately had an epiphany. She was copying my artwork. I was a pretty good artist. She knew that, so she was copying me. Wait for part two. Oh, what the hell? Let's try it. Covering the end in liner, I'm using the maiden one in black. Then she literally just stamped it like so. Oh. There is a slight outline there. I can still see the guide, so I'm going to fill it in. This is what it looks like. It actually works really well. If you've ever thought about getting your ears pierced, don't do what she did. This is the urban legend about a girl in Japan who tried to do it, then ended up with horrifying consequences. So this young girl really wanted to get her ears pierced. After some pleading with her parents, they finally agreed and gave her some money to go do it. But instead, the girl kept the money and decided to pierce them herself and let her friend help her. They heated up a large needle and went for it one day. It was painful, but in the end, she was happy she could finally wear earrings. However, this wouldn't last long. One day in school, she felt an intense pain in her left ear. Her earlobe was itchy, and by the end of the day, she had a head she went into the bathroom and saw her ear was very inflamed. Then she looked closer and saw a piece of white string sticking out of her new piercing. She picked and pulled at it, which only made the string longer. Now it was hanging out of her earlobe. The string seemed to be endless. The more she pulled, the longer it got. Finally fed up, she took a pair of scissors and cut the string. Suddenly, everything went black. There was a burning pain in her ears and her eyes. She began to scream. In the hospital, it was revealed that it wasn't a piece of string at all. She had pulled out a piece of her optic nerve and cut it. She would be blind for the rest of her life. My mother-in-law tampered with my birth control resulting in me getting pregnant 
three months postpartum. My husband, 22 male, and I, 20 female, welcomed our daughter into the world 18 weeks ago. She's a darling baby and really pretty easy as far as newborns go, except for one. She wasn't a son. My in-laws were obsessed with the idea of us having a son, to the point that they denied she was a girl up until the moment she was born. Why? Because the bloodline follows the father. If you don't have a son, our family name will die out. The day they came to visit in the hospital, my in-laws asked when we would be trying for another baby. We kind of just laughed it off, but my mother-in-law got more insistent, straight up telling us, y'all need to try for a boy. Over the next month or two, the conversation about us having another baby sort of tapers off into little comments every now and again. Around this time, mother-in-law started coming over daily. I shut her down and said I would make the best choices for my children and my body and left. When it came time for my 20-week level 2 scan, they allowed me one guest and Joe suggested I take Kim instead of him, which I refused to do. Joe did end up coming and he found out the gender because I wanted to keep it a surprise for me so we could throw a gender reveal party. I put a pregnancy announcement on my social media, and then she put up an announcement saying they were expecting twins, quote, the non-traditional way, and how blessed she was. (laughs) I was irritated, but I kept my mouth shut. Then she threw a gender reveal party and posted it on social media. I wasn't even invited. She also announced that she's having a baby shower. I commented on her post and told her to stop treating me like a surrogate. He and Kim and some of her friends and family are saying I'm an asshole. And her mother even called and insisted I give her one of my babies like this is the parent trap. Do you know there are true stories of people who found Coraline-like doors in their own houses? Except it didn't take them to another world, it took them to places much creepier. In 2015, there was this couple who bought a new house, and they found this tiny secret door disguised in their bookcase. So they were super intrigued and even excited. They were thinking maybe it would lead them to some hidden treasure or money. But as they were going through the passageway, they found a note that read, If you're reading this, then you found the secret room. But instead of something exciting, it said it's filled with black mold the walls inside this secret room were covered there was so much of it that the previous owner and his children were constantly getting sick from it so the couple immediately packed their things left the house making sure to sue the agent who sold them the mold infested house in the first place all right guys i'll have to make a part two of more people who found creepy secret doors am i the asshole for getting mad about my mom marrying my fiance's dad what I, 24 female, and my fiancé, 24 male, have been together since our sophomore year of college, so around five years now. For context, my mom had an affair with a co-worker when I was 16, leading to my parents' divorce. She has been single ever since. Sadly, my fiancé's mom passed two years ago due to cancer, and his dad has been single since. My fiancé proposed last year, but our wedding was delayed due to COVID. Three months ago, in January 2021, we decided it was time to have our families meet for the first time to discuss our upcoming wedding. This went well. This morning, out of the blue, my mom called me and announced that she had eloped. I was shocked as she had not been dating anyone to my knowledge. Upon questioning, it turns out that she and my fiance's dad had been dating in secret since that meeting in January and had married in secret yesterday, making my fiance my stepbrother. I have a movie idea. Hear me out. After a long day of work in a very big city, two strangers had the same idea. Find some random bar and get a drink. The guy is tall, dark, and handsome. And the woman is beautiful, confident, and mysterious. No wonder they caught each other's eye. He buys her a few drinks. She plays hard to get. The classic rom-com scenario. Clearly they want each other. But not in the way that you think. There's just one minor little detail that they both share in common that they don't know about each other yet. And that is that they're both serial killers. (laughs) He is the ideal target for her. And she is the ideal target for him. The guy usually waits till the woman falls in love with him before he kills her. And the girl does the same thing. So what happens when two serial killers start dating? Will they ever find out about each other? Will they try to kill each other at the same time? Does one of them get caught? Or do they fall in love and never kill again? This is why you should never spread rumors. Once there was a girl called Grace who always wore a hat to school. Even in the summer, she always had a knitted black beanie pulled down to her eyes. Soon, the rumors started around school. Some people said she must have ball patches or have another medical condition that the students didn't know about. Either way, she was constantly bullied for always wearing that hat. 
One day, Grace's class had a new teacher whose eyes immediately fell on Grace. She said, no hats in class. Grace's eyes widened and she went pale. Well, what are you waiting for? Take it off. Grace replied, I can't. The teacher grew angry, reached over, grabbed the hat, and yanked it off of Grace's head. The room fell silent, then screams, vomit, terror, and chaos. The back of Grace's head was blown open. Bits of skull caved into her head. A small matching hole sat on her forehead near her hairline. Grace then stood up and ran out of the room, sobbing. That was the last anyone has ever seen of Grace. A couple years passed and people stopped talking about it as much until a new kid joined their class. A kid who always wears a scarf. My best friend's boyfriend starts DMing me on Instagram. He confesses that he had a crush on me when we were in college together. And I told him that I did too. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. From that day on, he would DM me every single day and we would just flirt back and forth. I started feeling really, really guilty and I told him one day, I can't do this anymore. That's when he told me he also felt guilty and that the best thing was for us to stop talking. So we did. I was so sad. A few weeks passed by and my best friend asked me if she could have the apartment all to herself because she's planning a romantic dinner for him. I said yes, but I felt so jealous. Left the apartment because I realized that I was so in love with him. I went to the supermarket and ate a whole pack of Oreo cookies and went to the movies. I get a text message from my best friend asking me to come home immediately. My stomach sank and I thought she had found out. When I get there, she's crying and she says that he broke up with her. I asked if he said why and she said because he was in love with another woman. My stomach sank again. I was there with her the entire night while she cried knowing her boyfriend left her because of me. Part 3 is up. My best friend's boyfriend had broken up with her because of me. I didn't have the heart to tell her. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. A few days later, she started going out on Tinder dates again. I could see that she was feeling better, so I decided to confess to her everything. And she told me she could tell that he and I liked each other. Then she told me I should date him. Well, I didn't waste any time. I sent him a text message and asked him if he wanted to meet up for dinner. And when we did, he asked me to be his girlfriend. We did it for six months before he proposed. He even got my name tattooed on his neck. The only problem is that my mom thinks he might do the same thing to me. I don't even want to think about that because I truly believe that he loves me. But let's hope not. I've been planning the wedding and I asked my best friend to come. Of course she said yes. She's super happy for me. And she actually has a boyfriend now. Do you guys think my fiancé will end up doing the same thing to me? when you do this but you want to get all of your lashes i'm scared to this but let's try it anyway she curls them upside down and moves down her lashes i don't know how well you can see that but my lashes are actually going downwards then she curled them right at the root i've just put some mascara on i curled this side normally and this side with that technique i think this side looks slightly more curled <laughs> shut her down and said I would make the best choices for my children and my body and yeah. left. When it came time for my 20 week level two scan, they allowed me one guest and Joe suggested I take Kim instead of him, which I refused to do. Joe did end up coming and he found out the gender because I wanted to keep it a surprise for me so we could throw a gender reveal party. I put a pregnancy announcement on my social media and then she put up an announcement saying they were expecting twins, quote, the non-traditional way. 
and how blessed she was. <laughs> I was irritated, but I kept my mouth shut. Then she threw a gender reveal party and posted it on social media. I wasn't even invited. She also announced that she's having a baby shower. I commented on her post and told her to stop treating me like a surrogate. He and Kim and some of her friends and family are saying I'm an asshole. And her mother even called and insisted I give her one of my babies like this is the parent trap. 